Hello and welcome back to another JavaScript tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue our discussion with the Office API for Excel. And we're going to focus on one particular object, that is the Excel worksheet object and how to work with it, manipulate it, change some of its properties, and some of, use some of its methods. So pretty useful stuff. Definitely an important part of the series if you want to do kind of anything complicated with Excel. you got to be able to get to the worksheet that you need to get to. So the first thing that you notice right here is I do have my function already defined. And you can tell right away that I have two variables right now. One is sheet. Well, we'll change a little bit. We'll do sheet one and sheet two. Make it a little bit easier. Oh, and then of course I have it in the opposite direction, of course. But really all this is doing is it's grabbing the particular sheets in question. So for example, this is going to grab sheet one, and then this is going to grab sheet two. Now notice that we still use our runtime context environment, and then we have our Excel workbook property. We then go into our worksheets collection, and then that one has a method called get item, and we can just pass through either the index or the name of our particular sheet. Personally, like most people, we probably prefer the name in most cases. So this is just simply grabbing the worksheet. So grab the specific worksheets. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's start doing some stuff. Maybe the first thing that we want to do is we might want to copy a particular sheet. So maybe we want to copy sheet one. So we can copy sheet one. How would that look? Well, we simply call our sheet object and then we have the copy method. And inside this particular method, there are two parameters. One is the, <coughs> sorry, is the position type. And then the second parameter is relative to what? To what sheet? Sheet one, sheet two, so on and so on. So to get the position type, we type Excel. And then there is a worksheet position type constant that we can uh, specify, and that one has different options we can specify. So we have after, before, beginning, end. Well, let's just do before, right? So we'll specify that, and then we'll specify the sheet that we want it to be copied before. I want it before sheet two, so I'm gonna call sheet two. And so let's run this and see what we get. Once it loads. So you can tell that it copied it and then it put it down right before sheet two. So pretty cool when you think about it because this is just an easy way to copy a sheet and we can now specify where we want that sheet to be and relative to what sheet. Now what I could also do is I could take that sheet that I just copied and delete it. So delete the newly copied sheet. Well, in this case, that's always going to kind of be the, the active sheet that we selected in most cases if you don't do anything else. So I could say context workbook dot worksheets, get the active worksheet, and then we can call the delete method. And with the delete method, it will delete that new sheet that we did. So I'm going to first get rid of it, and then I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit. And you can tell that it's copying it. Well, looks like it's copying it. Ooh, that wasn't good. Looks like it crashed on me. Oops. So I've had that actually happen a couple times today, surprisingly. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but it's doing it. And, it's, and the weird thing is it seems to only be in this workbook, I've noticed. It seems to be causing a little bit of an issue. But for whatever reason, it happens. And when it happens, just reload your workbook and it should be fine. So basically what it was doing is it copies the sheet and then it deletes it right after, um, uh, what is it, after copying it. We can also change the sheet visibility. So if I want change the sheet visibility, and so we just call the sheet in question. So in this case, maybe I want sheet two. I can change the visibility of it to equal a couple different options. We have hidden, visible, or very hidden. Hidden means that if we go over here and we right click hide, or sorry, if we, um, what is it, hide, and then we do unhide, we can actually select it. Very hidden means even if they do that, it still will not be available. So this is a very specific type of hidden sheet. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna put very hidden inside of here so that way you can see it. 
So it hides it, but here's the problem. We can't unhide it, so it's very hidden. It's not, you can't see it otherwise. So what we have to do is we actually have to make it visible again. And so when we make it visible, then it brings it back out to where we can see it. So neat little trick um, if you wanna make something like hidden very much in the background where no one can see it and they can't unhide it, we now have access to that uh, property. We can also uh, turn off grid lines. So, uh, you know, turn off grid lines. These are gonna be more working more with the actual properties and we can do um, sheet one, uh, what is it? Show grid lines and we'll show, we'll set it equal to false. And then actually let's do that with sheet two, just so that way we have it. And then we can also uh, turn off headings. So we'll turn off the headers. And so we'll do sheet two, uh, sh sheet two dot show headings and we'll put that equal to false. And then with this one, we can see that it turns off the headings and the grid line. So again, if you wanna have an automatic setup happen in the background, this is how you would do it. We can also change the name of a particular worksheet. So maybe for example, I wanna change sheet two to my new sheet or something like that. So here we'll change the name. So to change the name, we actually have to load the property first because we're gonna be changing it real time. And so we're gonna load the property for sheet two. And then we'll do our await context sync. And then from here, we can change the name. So we'll say sheet two dot name equals my new sheet. And let's see what happens when we do that. You can see that it changed it to my new sheet. Um, obviously, if you want, you could do more with that. You could change the names and things like that. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna comment this out because it will change it when I go back up here and I try to select it, it's gonna actually throw an error because it's gonna say, well, there's no sheet two. So let's just put it back to what it originally was, but this was to demonstrate how to change the name of a sheet. So you first have to load the property, sync the property, and then finally change the name. We can also add a new worksheet. And so what we can do is we'll add a new worksheet and we'll let it uh, store in a variable, right? So we'll call this one sheet three that will equal our context.workbook.worksheets, and then we'll call the add method. And then this will add a new worksheet. So this is now sheet seven. And what I can do is I can now take this new sheet and play around with some even more properties. So maybe I wanna see the name, I wanna see the position, um, maybe protection, vertical page breaks, and all stuff like that. So let's just load a bunch of different properties. Load a bunch of different properties. And so what we'll do is we'll do sheet three dot load, and then we'll do the name. We'll do protection. We will do position. And then there's one final one, vertical page breaks. I'm trying to remember why I put that one in here. Sometimes I don't know. I just put it in there. <laughs> That's how I do things. I'm going to comment this out because I don't want to keep adding new sheets all the time. It's not going to make sense to do that. Oh, sorry. Not that one. That's fine. I'm going to delete this one though. And then from here, we will council log it after syncing everything. So what we'll do is we will do await context dot sync and then from here we can uh, what is it council log it and then we'll do sheet three dot name and then council dot log sheet three we'll do the protection and then what we'll also do is we'll copy it a couple times and just to make things go a little bit faster. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll put the position as well because we might be curious what position it's in. And then we'll also put uh, the vertical page breaks. I think that returns an object. I have to double check. Okay, yeah, I, that's what I thought it returns an object. Okay, so sheet nine. This is, is it protected? Well, right now it's not. And they have all these other things on here as well. So can you allow 
auto filter, delete columns, things like that. You can actually change a lot of, di of the different protections in here if you so choose. And then the position, and then there were no vertical page breaks. So at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's just again showing how you can kind of access the different properties and then display them. There's also a really neat little feature in here that I think is interesting. Something you can actually do is you can turn off the calculations entirely. So we can turn off the calculations. And then with this one, it's not going to it's not going to be where it's not going to update. It means formulas just will not work. So no formulas will work. And so if I call sheet 3 dot enable calculation and I set that equal to false, we'll turn it off and then I'll show you what happens. So here, so for example, I put five and six, right? And then I try to add five and six, it just comes back with zero. None of the formulas will work once you put this in here. So if I go over here though, and I go to this particular sheet and I actually try to add these numbers, now it will work. So that's just a neat little trick as well if you want to be able to turn off calculations entirely. And then we can also change the freeze panes. So that's like going up to here to view and then having like the freeze panes where we can say, hey, we want a certain number of rows and columns and things along that nature. But for this one, you actually have to grab the object itself and then call its methods. So grab the freeze pane object. And what we'll do is we'll just store it in a variable called panes and that will equal sheet three and then we'll do the freeze panes. And then from here, what we can do is we can freeze the first four rows. So freeze the first four rows. And so it would be panes.freeze rows. And then I'm gonna pass through the number of rows that I wanna freeze. I'm gonna delete it. That's fine. And then I'm gonna run it. Let's see what we get. So as you can tell, it froze the first four rows. I can also freeze the columns. So we'll freeze the first two columns and then we'll do panes and then we'll do freeze columns and we'll do two and then I'm going to delete it again. It's funny how sometimes it pops up. So now it's two columns and then the final way that you can do it is you can actually freeze a range of cells. So you can specify a range of cells to basically start the freeze at. So freeze a range of cells and so we'll do again panes freeze at and then we can pass through a string that represents a range of cells so let's do from c4 to c10 i'm going to again delete and then we'll run it and so what do we get here so here it freezes at four range uh, c4 to c10 so that's kind of like the little like leftmost corner i guess left uppermost corner and then from here, it's freezing everything, and it's going to keep all that kind of active for us. And then if we go this way, it's still going to keep C, but it's going to keep from C4 to C10. So again, if you want to really customize it and really make it something different, that's how you would do it. Okay, but with that being said, that does finish this particular video. So if you have any questions, please remember to put them down in the comments below, and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thanks again for watching, everybody. We will see you in the next video.